Hi everybody, hi every spirit, welcome very much to my YouTube channel. Today, we have the second match out of a best of three, of best of five, my bad, between on the color blue, it's give you anxiety, also known as GUA, on the Holy Roman Empire. On the color pink, it's Shiki, with the Mongols, and the map is Prairie, the openest of open maps the most scattered resource map as you can see and the map most likely with more sheep on it right it's pretty prairie was on the uh, map pool for the la least for the last ranked season for season four and i had a lot of fun i had a lot of games in this map i really like this map and uh, Sometimes you can just hide TCs from your enemy because the map is so big and open that you can't really scout effectively sometimes. And uh, you have a lot of sheep, you, you, like wood uh, civilizations that really need wood. Yeah, sometimes it's like 10 minutes and we have villagers here collecting wood. It, it's super open map. That's why HRE, is this a double TC or multiple TC opening or play? Because HRE can really do that. You can go like here, drop a TC, Go right there, drop a TC. Because it's kind of hard to scout. This map is so big and open. It's kind of hard to scout, right? There is a lot of ground to scout. Oh, little little hill here for uh, for GUA. No hill for Shiki. That could be an advantage because it's very hard to attack through this side. You can just wall there. And then the only entrance to your base is here and through the back. And there, you know. Ooh, almost running out of sheep. Where is a scout from GOA? What? There you go. That's a lot of sheep. Uh, also, this map is really good for trade. Trade in the back. You can make a complete trade route. Or to that side as well. So maybe here, Mongols. Mongols with trade on this map seems kind of unfair. In my opinion, right, guys? What? By the way... This game, or this match, this set, I mean, this battle of 5 is part of round 2 of Group C from EGC TV's most recent tournament called Two Arms. We are right now on the Swiss stage. We're right now live on Twitch, so use the links down below to catch me and EGC TV live on Twitch. So you can support us to have better tournaments, more tournaments, more casting, and better casting as well. Let's go. Oh, it's a Tower Rush. Good old E. This is all this time in AoE 4. Mongol Tower Rush. Let's go. Right on the Aachen. That, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt uh, GOA's economy. No, it's not. They're shifting away. Maybe you're gonna drop it on the stone? Bro, that gold is so out of range. So you're gonna... What's the plan for GOA here? You get the wood. You get the ship under the TC. You get the f we get farms on late game. Nice. Oh, Shiki brings two villagers. Well done. Bro, I really like the, the music from the HRE. It's not the best music in the game, but it's really nice. It's really nice music from the HRE. Okay, but I think I prefer the Mongols music with the, the throat singing, right? So we see a archery range coming in immediately. Spears burning down. Oh no! Oh, he might just repair this anti-Mongol raid. Because when Mongols raid stuff, they gain uh, resources in return. But not with emergency repairs, because you just repair it, so no burning. And they don't need to destroy it, they just need to set it on fire. Alright? Remember that, guys.
The silver, yeah, I knew it. The silver tree coming in for our Mongol player being built with six. Then you just put it there and good trade. I think actually Prairie is a very good map for tournaments. I think it is. We, I have to watch more matches and more matchups to see how it plays out. But I think it's a great map for tournaments. Let me know what you think down below with some. Co oh, there you go. The big villager pool. Do you have textiles? Yes, yes. Uh, great play. You have the archers, so the spears can't just come out. You have the prelate too. It's actually... I think HRE is very hard to tower rush. Because they can just do this. Yeah, they can just pull villagers with prelates. It's great. Right? Yeah, no villagers lost. It's a lot of idle time, that's true. But there's no bummer. GW resolves the situation like a pro. Because he is a pro. <laughs> Let's go. One of my favorite players to watch, for sure. GUA. He plays a mixture of meta and uh, non-meta, which I really like. Double tower. Whoa, wait. What? Double tower? Why? So you can fit 10 spears inside? 10 spears, the can No. 5 spears, the can 2 villagers. That's 8 in total. Yeah, that makes sense. Whoa, doing for a second TC. You, you drop the second TC there, so no more towers in the future. Good play. Good plan. You can always do, like, a crazy play, but I've seen that happen and work, which is, like, kind of a TC creep. Like, you, you move TC by TC, or you, you move with houses uh, to the next location of your TC, because then you can just repair it with emergency repairs, right? Yeah, this, this is always so annoying, bro. The tech notifications from the arrows. Another tower, bro. How much? 100, 200, 300, 400. That's almost half a, a TC for the Mongols, bro. Bro. A mixture, bro, with men. The silver tree going over there. Oh, oh, be careful, be careful. Nice, pick, pick those villagers, man. Pick those villagers apart. Horseman coming in, second TC from GOA coming in online as well. I thought it was going to be close to the gold. Because you have no gold now. Ah, maybe just build some horsemen and burn down the tower. But the thing is, now Mongols are trading. So the longer you take to do something, either age up or push in feudal, you'll have so much advantage because let me see oh we can see the gold wait what why why can't we see how much they're carrying i need i need to switch player views for that uh, i thought it was you could see maybe i need to switch the player i actually i don't remember what is the the short key the the shortcut to do that i have to check after this match i really th Maybe... No, because he's already carrying gold. So we don't know how much gold is that trader carrying. It's okay. I, 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 on, on high view, or no, on, on, high, on player it's always very good. The market is not here. So it will not be 120. But will be like... That trader is carrying like 54 gold. No, maybe... Maybe this is 120 in total. It's not 140. So it's, it's going to be like 60 gold that you're carrying? 60 something? 62? 64? That's why it's not showing because they are not queued correctly. They're not really correct. Ah, it's 60. Ah, okay. That's why. My bad, guys. My bad, guys. 
It's because they weren't rallied correct. So it's 67, yeah. So that's 134. Bro, you, you need like six traders to go castle. Oh, villagers go. Oh man, it's so complicated. Jue. No, ah! It's kind of smart because now she he needs to manually point at the villagers. Because by default, the tower will attack the mining camp. Oh! One vill goes down. Horse money back there. On the TC, there is trade 2. This is getting complicated for Jiwei. Kashyyyk killing the archers. A lot of the, a lot of villagers idle. There is no... Oh man, and now Kashyyyk's on the field. That second TC, it's really not covering any food source. How many traders do we have? Eight already, bro. Shiki is gonna be castled really soon. He's making some uh, Kashiks. But once the trade grows to like 10, 12 traders, you'll be castled even producing Kashiks. Especially because he's dropping outposts and then he can just research the Yam network. And those traders will walk faster, making that trade way more efficient. It's tough. When Mongol, like, they tower rush you, because they don't win with tower rush, but they delay you. And they delay you so much, right? And, and that's the key. Because in order for you, like, I always say this, and not a lot of people agree with me, but for me it's pretty obvious. Tower rush, for me, should not be, you, you should not be able to drop a tower close to your enemy's base. Because a tower costs 100 wood. You move two villagers, and for the enemy to deal with your towers, they either have to pull a lot of villagers, which is risky, which is a lot of idle time, so uh, they are investing way more than you, or uh, option number B, making a bunch of horsemen or a bunch of spear, which is very expensive, because you have to make the buildings and then the units, or option C, the most expensive, you have to build a blacksmith, research siege engineering and make a ramp. So, all of these options are extremely more expensive than making a tower. So, Mongols, they risk very little, they pay very little, but they delay so much. Then, for you to kill the... Not only you are already delayed, right? For you to get rid of the towers, you have to delay yourself even more. So, I think it's very unfair. Jue losing the archers over there. Uh, it's looking grim. It's looking bad. Jue did go for a second TC, which is a good option. Having a bunch of farms there. Moved to the front goal. Lost six vills. Not good. Still almost uh, six villagers ahead. There is a lot of trade. Nine traders. Bro, like, it's so hard to stop trade. Especially against Mongols. Because they can just double produce. They have Kashyyyks. Right. I mean, HR, we can go Castle Age and then grab the relics and then have a lot of gold, but it's never be it's gonna it's never gonna be as good as trade. Oh, oof. Huge cash raid. Yeah, and, and, like, just to finish the point of the tower rush, I don't understand why people don't agree with me, bro. Because people say, oh, it's fine. It's fine. But it's not. They invest so little and they risk so little. And they, they delay the opponent so much and the opponent has to invest in so much just to deal with that tower with that little investment you know oh 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 Oof, that's tough seven villagers down already for g-way soon to be eight 
The scout comes in. Distraction. Horseman attacking the tower. Not ideal. Nice, you were moving to the board. I really like that. Uh, I, I would like it more if you bring a prelate there. Cashix okay, raids over and over again. Uh, GWA killed four traders. He's going to Ragnitz now. There is a chance. There is a chance. Because you grab the relics and you balance the gold income a little bit. Uh, Kashyyyk's under the TC. Taking a lot of damage. Horseman is attacking the trade once again. How many traders do we have? 18 traders! And every trader is making 100... Oh, it's not... It's, it changed to... Oh, because the, sil the, the, the Silk Road, right? Because it was 60-something, now it's 70-something. Maybe maybe he moved the silver tree a little bit? Because that's 148 gold per trip. So if you have 10 traders, that's 1,480 gold per trip. Trip as in the complete. Uh, that's so much. And he's getting to 20 traders, so it's 2,860 gold per trip. Oh, that, just on traders. Castle Edge does come through for GUA. Shiki is very close to it as well. Oh, what the hell? Huge army coming in. <laughs> Spring all in placement. I always like to see those. They are always very dramatic. Jiwei, good, good economy, right? Close, to, is, is, is able to... F uh, oh, no, no, actually, no. 900 per minute from Shiki, and he has zero villagers on gold, yeah. It's just from the trade, bro. And it, it will get better, because um, the counter... Per, per, it, it, it's not very accurate, right? Because, like, in one minute, it might be arriving five traders, on another minute, it might be six traders. Because it depends on, the, on the, uh, when they were created, right? Uh, Joey with two relics already, which is really good. Shiki a uh, wooden castle with a cool time. Shiki has doubled the military of Jue. It's bro, it's Mongol trade is really hard to stop right now. Because they are cheaper, they are faster produced. And this all started this Mongol trade meta game. It all started with the sh uh, the Kashiks. Because back in the day, with no Kashiks, you only had horsemen, which are not great to defend trade, right? Or to apply pressure to your enemy. Now you have traders, oh, you have Kashiks, which are a really good unit for feudal age. Ooh, big fight. Kashyyyk's are now veteran, yeah. But the most of the army for Shiki is protecting the trade. Jue also going for the sacred sites. Maybe a little wall over there. Would be nice. Nice. Spears pushing the Kashyyyk's away. 
That's the fourth relic. I, 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 bro, as tough as this matchup is, Jue is playing very well. Right? Two TCs, Ragnit, Relics, now some walls, Sacred Sites, went for the board, finishes up now the board. There was a prelot there. See, he's, he's doing everything he can. He's doing everything right. Right? So let's see if he can win. Because, this, especially on this map, this matchup is really complicated for the HRE. It's not easy. Not easy at all. It's because it's super easy for the Mongols to just trade. Especially if they tower rush you, they set you back so much. They, they basically, like, they have guaranteed trade. It's free trade. Free real estate. Nice. Spears on the trade. Let's go. Oh, but they do no damage! And they, and they, they move so fast with the M network, the spears cannot catch up to them. It's ridiculous. Uh, I guess it's the M. Uh, Abba, what? What? You're going fast Imperial? And with the Hellsbach Palace? Not with the Schwabia, so it's not cheaper. It's those farms, bro. Jue being caught with the pants down. Do it! Do it! Ulolo. Damn, that stuff. I don't know. Do you guys think that Mongol trade needs a nerf or something like that? We see some lands connector. Jiwei was not able to go Imperial. His economy is being slaughtered. He lost 27 villagers so far. He's still trying to attack the trade with the knights, but... Look how fast they go, man, with the EM network. Look how fast they go. It's, that's kind of bonkers. That's kind of broken. Ragnitz goes down. Jue kinda holding on, kinda defending more nicely. Now going for the men at arms. Losing a lot. Yeah, GG gets called. It was a super hard matchup, guys. Super hard. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this matchup. Does Mongol need a nerf or at least a trade? Until the next time, I wish you the best as a trade for surfing out.